I go over the basketball rules. They'll probably seem pretty basic, but you have to know them because the participants will come ask you about them. And these are like the basic things you need to be able to tell them. Because any other questions, like like you said, you'll have supervisors out there and we should know all the answers. Hopefully, if we don't, we'll find them out. Um, but the main thing is, is they have to have a student ID to play. We will also have faculty. Um, you guys don't really deal with this as much. We normally have like a sport assistant checking people in. Um, but they do have to have a student ID to play, and they'll be checked in outside of the gym. Yeah, everything I just said. Also, check people for jewelry. I know as supervisors, we're supposed to check them when we check them in, but girls will come in, especially with like earrings or like other piercings in their ear, and they'll have a headband and they'll like slide it over, and um, that's not allowed. Uh, most girls know how to hide it from people. Um, so if you're, for girls especially, like when you're refing, know where to look. Also a lot of people have in nose earrings or nose piercings. That's also not allowed if they say, yeah, I can't take it out. They can't play. It sucks. But um, they should have known that before they signed up. And you will have people that will come in with jewelry on. You just stop the game be like, hey, take out your jewelry if they can't, like, get them off the court. This is what the score sheet looks like. The only thing that you guys really need to know is at the end of each game, you'll have to give a team a sportsmanship rating. And that's on a scale of one to five. One being like, they were terrible, they yelled at you, there were like multiple ejections, um, stuff like that. So a team should hopefully no, never get a one. Um, what, you sh what you should aim for each time is a, from a three to about a five. A three is like, they probably talk to you, talk back to you some, but like it wasn't to the point where you were ejecting people left and right, stuff like that. Um, a five is like, they were absolute angels, which you probably won't have unless it's like a women's team, maybe. Sometimes they're not really angels either. Um, but you'll probably have like a three or a four normally. Um, Greek nights, you'll probably have a three, rare, occasionally a two, which sucks because they will yell at you and they'll have fans and stuff. But uh, one big thing to know is if you do give them below a three, there has to be a reason. So like, if you didn't have like a bunch of technical stuff like that, there's no reason to give them a two because that'll play into playoffs. So they might not be able to get in the playoffs if they don't have like a three average of sportsmanship. Um, so just keep that in mind. Oh, these are the basketball rules. You need your ID, no jewelry is a big thing. Um, the game ball for what you'll normally use if it's like co-rec, It'll be a men's ball unless they decide otherwise, um, or if they agree to a different ball. If they can't agree, you'll use a woman's ball. Um, but normally, you'll use a men's ball. For women's games, use a women's ball. It's pretty straightforward, but if you do have questions, like ask a supervisor. Um, you can't dunk, so this will be mainly in men's games, sometimes correct, but they can't dunk before, during, or after the game. So if you see them, um, you have to give them a technical foul. We don't eject them and make them leave, but they do get a technical foul. So even if it's before the game or after, you still have to tell them and like go tell the scorekeeper like, hey, number 33, dunked. Like give them a technical. Um, and if it's deemed unsportsmanlike, then you can eject them, but that's kind of based off what you guys see. Um, so just be aware of that. If you think it's unsportsmanlike, then eject them. If it's they just dunked for the heck of it, they'll be fine. Just give them a technical. So players, there are five players on the basketball court for each team. It seems pretty basic, but you will have some people ask you that. Um, but you can start with as few as as few as four players. So sometimes you'll have teams that have people coming from class and they won't have all five, but you can start with four people and you can keep playing until, um, well you can also like, if you start with four and then a third, like the third person gets hurt, but that's still a competitive game, you can allow them to play until they don't have a chance to win. So if it's like a 20 point game and they have three people, you can probably end the game there. But if they have a chance to win, keep the game going. Um, subs, so, if you've been in the MAC gym, you'll know they're boxes, basically, where they'll be standing inside. What you'll have them do is just like go outside the box and sit like in front of the scorer's table. It's not a lot of room, uh, but have them sit there and have them wait until the official calls them in, because um, it's not like indoor soccer where you can just 
sub on the fly. And then they can only enter on a dead ball, so like not when there's a made basket, um, or on timeouts, or free throws. And if you do it on free throws, it's before the last shot. Um, yeah. So the timing of this, we don't do quarters, we do two 20 minute halves. The clock is running until the last minute of the second half, so just be aware of that, because teams will try and yell at you and be like, hey, why isn't the clock stopped? It's because it doesn't stop until the last minute of the second half. So you'll see them roll the ball um, during like the last minute of the first half. It still doesn't stop, so they can roll the ball if they want to. Um, but also there's a three minute halftime. This the sport assistant will probably put it on the board. Um, and during halftime, you'll meet with the supervisor who's on duty, and they'll talk through um, what happened in that quarter, or that half. Uh, clock doesn't stop on a made bucket. And so mercy rule is a big thing that you'll have for some games, because you can tell that some teams are a lot better than others. Um, so if a team is up by 40 points within five minutes, or with five minutes left, in the uh, second half, you'll end the game. If you can't keep up with that math in your head or like you can't tell, the sport assistant in the box should blow the horn and be like, hey, mercy rule, game's over. Um, and same thing goes for if you're up by 20 points with two minutes left. Th this one happens more often than the 40 points um, one. So just be aware of that. If you do keep track or if you do see it, you know, as soon as you see it hit the 20 part mark within the two minutes, call the game. Uh, but the sport assistant should help you out with that. So timeouts, the teams are allowed, you have three timeouts for the whole game, and they're all 30 seconds. As an official, you just kind of time that in your head. We're not gonna put 30 seconds up on the clock just because it's too much to do. Um, and who may call a timeout? If the team's in possession of the ball, they can call a timeout. Uh, either team can call a timeout during the dead ball during a dead ball, or it can be called by players on the court when they are in possession of the ball. So if a team is on offense, they have the ball, and defense tries to call a timeout, don't grant it because they don't have possession of the ball. Um, so for overtime, this will also happen more often than you'd think. Overtime is a three minute period, and after the end of regulation, you'll have another captain's meeting, and you'll kind of go over this with the team captains again just so they know but it's a three minute period and the clock will only stop in the last minute of that time frame and that'll be on all whistles so just be aware of that um, the scorekeeper might mess this up so you just need to keep a, keep an eye on the clock because if you do if we let time run off the players will get mad at you and they'll yell at you or they'll yell at us um, so just try and watch the clock if we don't stop it in time and overtime is an extension of the second half, so if a player has five fouls in the second half, they will not be allowed to play in overtime because they have fouled out. If they have four and they get the, their fifth foul in like the first minute of overtime, they have fouled out. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that was all I had. Five crews of 